Dave Hill from Terrestrial Energy. We are not technology evangelists. We were looking at what could be implemented commercially, which means somebody will pay for it, by 2030. Molten salt technology came out to be a result. It was not the usual engineering approach of how can we make a salt reactor. 440 megawatt thermal, thermal spectrum, graphite moderated, fluoride salt, atmospheric pressure, 44% thermal efficiency, giving you just short of 200 megawatts electric, 600 degrees Celsius salt supply. We operate on low enrichment, and I'll come back to that. Seven-year fuel cycle length, a very, very flexible system, and it's designed for cost efficiency. That figure in the middle there is not just to fill the white space. It's actually origin story. When you start with salt, because of the properties, you can have a lower capital expenditure, capex, and higher revenue. So it's an economic proposition, and that's why we're in this game. Simplicity equals safety, flexibility, reduced cost, multiple products, multiple revenue streams. In the top right there, core unit, 12 meters by 3.7 meters, with upflowing salt through a graphite moderated region, heat exchanges, fairly standard stuff. And in our design, the reactor core unit is replaced every seven years. Two operating silos, six storage silos, Eight times sevens is 56. That's a 56-year plant life. In our model, you operate one of these for seven years. You switch over. You move spent unit into storage or within containment. Move in a new unspent unit. We have the option of pumping over the uh, fluid or not. We haven't decided whether that makes sense, but it's certainly feasible. And then continue to operate. Simplicity and keeping everything inside the containment. As a derivative of the molten salt work at Oak Ridge, uh, you know, we use a fluoride-based homogeneous salt, and our design is focused on pragmatism. I made my career in research, pushing the boundaries of what's possible to the edge of the table. Here, we're focused on de-risking, de-risk everything, because risk is cost. The more you can reduce the risk, the more you can reduce the cost. So the way we see it is all the major SSCs are yeah, TRL 6 or 7, a little bit of judgment there. We won't have a demonstration reactor. Demonstration reactors are not financeable in the public finance market. Construction texting and startup will confirm that readiness. And there's no reliance on high assay LAU. So this is an example of our approach to pragmatism. We can operate on high assay LAU, and if it's available, we can accommodate it quite easily. And this is a benefit to us a little bit. But why would we put our design at risk of unavailability of high assay LEU. I'm sure in the end, somebody will produce it for us. But since we don't need it, why include that risk in our basic design? So what does it cost us to go to LEU? Nothing really, except a slight increase in volume. In the feed up we have to do to compensate from burn up, you're adding more material for the same amount of fissile uranium. But in the end, it's a, a straightforward economic assessment that we're better off in LEU. Standard LEU, we exist within current fuel cycles. There's no risk issue there. We take that off the table. And the seven-year core unit is exactly the same principle because there, what limits the life is the graphite. And seven years is the life of the graphite in this spectrum. In the MSRE, they pulled it out, moved it aside, etc., etc. A lot of operating risk. Our determination is we don't need to do that. We just have a replaceable complete unit shift over to the other one, store, let it cool down, bump the salt out either back in the reactor or storage, let it cool down. It's economically effective because we're translating a, a lot of risk out of the system and replacing it with a capital penalty. And so we don't think we need a lot of uh, new technologies. We do need work done, technology development work done, and I'll talk more about that, but it's not fundamentally new. It is validation, recreating databases, making sure that uh, we understand material properties, etc. all of the technology development you'd have to do in any system. One of these purposes of these talks is to show you how we're developing as a company. Probably the key message in this is that we are not a PR company. We have a solid engineering process, management systems, procedures, workflow, you know, the whole uh, digital uh, engineering approach. We see the development of the reactor in five phases, conceptual engineering, 
and that was tied up with the VDR phase one in Canada. And I'll come back to that. We're in basic engineering now. That's the next level. It establishes system level details, which will enable down the road detailed engineering. And in contrast to some of the other talks we've heard, we are purchasing, working with expertise around the world to get our data validation, verification, and also components can't give you a complete list. I'm not sure I know all of them anymore, but the national labs in the US, their equivalents in Europe, vendors of various sorts of heavy equipment, simulator the vendors, we're not going to be making those things. We're going to be procuring them and building partnerships around them. But the trick is keeping the engineering on this pace to meet business objectives and getting partnerships and supply chain built up so that we can demonstrate and ultimately build for operation a commercial plant by 2030. And that's our goal. The regulatory process is key to this, of course. IMSR successfully completed the CNSC vendor design review phase one. But unless you're in Canada to any degree, you might not know what that means. It's actually a very sensible system because as a phase one VDR is as much a review of the company as it is of the technology. Obviously, the technology sets the context, but the review also interrogates whether you have the management system in place, the QA in place, whether you have the design control in place to be credible as a reactor vendor. I think this is core for non-Canadians in the audience. That VDR phase one and passing through it is a mark of credibility as an engineering company. We're in the middle of VDR phase two, which is really very much about the technology. We're engaging with the NRC. We've chosen a part 52 approach using the core unit, but the NRC has agreed is a substantial part in their language, have engaged in pre-licensing procedures. We were approached and asked if we were willing to volunteer to be the subject of a joint regulatory activity by the two agencies, and that is proceeding. The USNRC was an observer at CNSC proceedings. We're moving at the right pace through the regulatory process and matching it to the pace of engineering. What happens when we finish? It's not a, a, a regulatory approval, but it's just absence of demerit really will help us access broader private capital, firm up the nuclear supply chain commitments. So this is key to our development process and key to commercial success. We have our early stage supply agreements in place, graphite, pumps, fuel, simulators, steam generators, turbine. Today or yesterday, we signed a contract with Argonne National Lab. I bring it up now because GAIN is sponsoring this. And we had two GAIN awards, which helped Argonne and ourselves uh, develop material uh, properties development. And now we are using our money not government money, to further materials property measurement at Argonne. We, we thank the U.S. government for seeding that activity and for Argonne with working with us. Now, importantly, you may have read this, Ontario Power Generation, OPG, selected three designs for consideration for advanced SMR deployment in Ontario, and we were one of those designs. Now, this was not a beauty contest. This was serious engineering due diligence by a sophisticated utility looking at possible SMR vendors who could supply a design that OPG could use. And we're one of the three. So again, I think this goes to credibility and viability as a solid engineering company. The business case drives private capital investment support. So we have to get the CapEx down, use the thermal efficiency for LCOE. It all drives our pragmatic approach to engineering and the technology decisions. Because we produce high temperature heat, we have the ability to match with variable renewal, thermal storage, all of what have become standard over the years approaches. We say at the bottom, it's not just for electric grid power provision, but our corporate belief is that unless we can be competitive for electric grid power provision, we will not penetrate the market. All of these other capabilities will be enabled by being cost competitive for electric grid power provision. And equally, a thermal MSR like our IMSR can be used as a waste burner, but the price of admission is being competitive for electric grid power provision. I'll answer any questions. You have attracted a couple of questions, and I expect you might get a few more. You mentioned the life of the core unit module is based on the lifetime of the graphite. What are these lifetime constraints on the graphite? 
the standard graphite performance under thermal neutrons, which mean swelling and then shrinking. And once you get to that life, you just don't want to deal with it. Move it out, put some fresh graphite in. And we do that not by replacing the graphite within the core unit, simply by swapping out the core unit. Imagine a scan going out. Are you continuously loading more fuel into this vessel over the seven years? If not, how are you managing the excess reactivity over the seven-year cycle? We are continuously loading more fuel in, 4.95, still LEU. So it has a feed, but not a bleed. And we have to have volume available for that. So that defines the length of the core unit. We need the room to add 4.9% uranium salt. Can you speak a bit about which mod sim software you intend to use, especially in terms of neutronics and thermohydraulics? We have been using various commercial codes for the physics and the thermal hydraulics separately in our engineering approach. And we are working right now trying to figure out what our preferred solution will be for a fully coupled integrated look at it. We haven't made that decision, but we're at the point where that decision needs to be made shortly. What is the power conversion type, Ranking or Brayton cycle? We want to go with standard power conversion, existing technology. We are not pushing the boundary there. We don't want to accept any risk that we can avoid accepting.